My name is Abel Garcia, and this is my final presentation on fall protection. In this training, I will be covering these main points. Analyze the importance of fall protection, identify the main criteria that prompts use of fall protection for fall hazards, use the right PPE for the job, correctly wear a full body harness, and cover critical fall protection standards. Why is fall protection important? Falls are a leading cause of injuries and fatalities in the construction industry and within the top three causes of fatalities in the work industry. Wearing a body harness can be a bit annoying and following rules and regulations are repetitive, but because falls are a leading cause of fatalities in the work industry, we need to take them seriously so workers can get home safe. Employers must have a workplace set that prevents falls and from elevated work services. Here's a picture of the OSHA's Fatal 4. Um, here we have falls at 36%, um, struck by objects 10%, electrocutions 9%, and caught in and between uh, 2%. So this illustrates that falls are a leading cause of death in the workforce. When do I use fall protection? OSHA requires fall protection at the start height of four feet but in the construction industry, fall protection is required at six feet. If a worker is in danger of falling into a machine or equipment, employers must provide tow boards and guardrails, preventing them from falling. What PPE do I use for the job? There are two types of fall protection and they are work positioning equipment and fall arrest equipment. Typically and especially in the construction industry, full body harnesses are often used and are much safer than body belts. Guardrails and tow boards are commonly used, especially with scaffolds. Here we have different types of fall protection. These are guardrails, these are tow boards, and this is your full body harness with a uh, lanyard. Typically, you, you put this lanyard on the guardrails preventing you to fall over, it'll catch you. Um, Next, correctly wearing a full body harness. First, you inspect the body harness for damage and make sure everything's working right. This, this uh, consists of checking the straps and buckles, make sure they work right. Um, when in doubt, throw it out. If it has a tear, throw it out. Um, make sure everything is working fine. Then shake the body harness by the D-ring for any straps that are tangled. Following that, you need to look for the impact indicator. If the impact indicator is removed, then this body harness is damaged and should be thrown out, should not be worn. After inspecting, it's time to put on the body harness. Start by putting the D-ring on your back and putting your arms through the straps as if you are putting on a shirt. Then buckle the leg straps in the groin area and tighten it. You should be able to fit two to three fingers between the straps and your legs to see how tight it is. Next, you'll connect the waist strap and fit the chest strap into the buckle and pull it to secure it. Here's a picture of uh, someone wearing a full body harness correctly. And here's uh, an illustrative step-by-step -step how you should put it on. Critical fall protection standards. 1926.501B1, unprotected sides and edges. Each employee on a walking slash working surface, horizontal and vertical surface, with an unprotected side or edge, which is six feet, 1.8 meters, or above, or more above a lower level, shall be protected from falling by the use of guardrail systems, safety nets, or personal fall arrest systems. And what they mean by personal fall arrest systems, that includes your full body harness. Um, moving on. 1926.501 B2I, each employee who is constructing a leading edge six feet 1.8 meters or more above lower level shall be protected from falling by guardrail systems, safety net systems, or personnel fall arrest systems. Next we have 1926.501 C3, barricade the area to which Objects could fall, prohibit employees from entering the barricaded area, and keep objects that may fall far enough away from the edge of a higher level so that those objects would not go over the edge if they were accidentally displaced. And I feel like part of this is communication, telling other employees not to enter this area because they could fall. 
um, and which is very important because as I spoke earlier, fall protection is very important for the leading cause of fatalities in the work industry. In my con conclusion, finally we understand how important fall protection is, heights and distances required for fall protection, when to use a body harness, and have uh, analyzed the key standards for the protection for fall protection in the workforce. I picked these um, these standards because I felt like they were they were more important, they were more critical, and they're a bit repetitive. They all do they all involve six feet apart, so that's kind of um, what it needs to be. Um, and these are my sources. Thank you. That was bad, but it's okay. I'm gonna submit that.